The following is a production of Learfield Sports. It's time to get ready for some hoops with a special basketball edition of the UMass Sports Insider. We'll sit down with Matt McCall, who is ready to go for season two at the helm and has a deep roster set to hit the court. Then we go inside women's basketball practice with Tori Verdi mic'd up. Later, an iconic NBA photographer with ties to UMass was recently honored by the Basketball Hall of Fame and we took him back to where it all started. Then we stop by field hockey to meet one of the A-10's most talented offensive players. Finally, we'll look back at the 2018 UMass Hall of Fame induction where we recognize the legendary group of former student athletes. All of this and more, it's the UMass Sports Insider starting now. Hi there, welcome to another episode of UMass Sports Insider. I'm your host Josh Maurer here at the beautiful Champion Center. As the temperatures are dropping outside, it means that we are getting close to the start of another college basketball season. Well, for Matt McCall, as he gets ready for his second year at the helm of the Minutemen, expectations are raised with four transfers who sat out last season ready to contribute, as well as a talented trio of freshmen. The Minutemen are set to make some noise, and recently we caught up with Coach McCall to preview the campaign. Lift off. I think the excitement really surrounding our program was very, very positive. Uh, obviously, we still got a lot of work to do, uh, but the direction that we're heading in, uh, everyone I think is really excited about. Tipkins gets a return from McLean, a left wing three. Each and every one of them is different. Um, Luan Tipkins, uh, you know, averaged 10 points a game as a freshman. Uh, in the Atlantic 10, uh, and he goes off and, and ties for the lead in the scoring, uh, or leading the league in scoring. Uh, so, you know, just his development on the floor uh, was astronomical, and it was fun to watch. You know, and then you got Carl Pierre who came into the season with very little expectations uh, and he kind of bursted onto the speed. So those two guys especially dealing with the expectation piece going into this season. Down the court finds Pierre, cutting to the rim and it's a right-handed dunk. Uh, you know, Unique McLean uh, gave us some great minutes throughout the year, started a bunch for us as well. Uh, had a highlight reel play against Dayton at home which ended up being a huge victory for us and really grow, grew as a player throughout the year from red shirting as his freshman year to really being thrusted into you know a, a starting role uh, as a true for, or a red shirt freshman the four guys that we had sitting out the transfers you know I told them before they came here it was a get better year it wasn't a sit out year uh, and they really focused on that, and I give our coaching staff and our assistant coaches a lot of credit for each and every game day being in the gym with them on Sundays when we get back from a road trip, me working them out because their development is huge for us to take the big step that we're trying to take no matter what before practice. To start practice, we're going to do individual instruction. We're going to work on you improving your game, your ball handling, your shooting, your movement out there, concepts offensively, pick and roll execution. We put a lot of effort into that. Just spending an enormous amount of time trying to get that connection and investment in our players, both on and off the floor, I think is huge for us. And you know, really been trying to focus on that. And we've got to get to work and have a whatever it takes mentality. Everybody says they want to win. Uh, there's more that goes into it than just the ball going into the basket. It's about our culture. Uh, it's about fighting for it every single day and understanding that in order for us to have any opportunity at doing something special as a program and as a group. We've got to be a thousand percent connected. With the new faces joining stalwarts like Luan Pipkins, Carl Pierre, and Rashawn Holloway, you get the feeling it could be a fun season on the hardwood for Coach McCall's team. Switching gears a bit, expectations are also raised for the UMass Minute Women, where Turi Verdi has had success rebuilding the program, and as he continues to do so recently, we were lucky enough to get a microphone on Coach Verdi during a practice to get a look inside what's going on with the UMass women's team. 
My thought of the day is success is determined by your willingness to improve yourself, improve yourself every day. All right, be great today. Together on three. One, two, three. Together. Here we go. Hustle up. On the balls. On the balls of the line. Let's go. Let's go. Pick up our pace. Let's go. Talk to each other. Too quiet. Good. Good growth. Good growth. Three minutes to make 30. All right. Fly up the floor. All right, have, make sure you're showing target hand. You knock this down, all right, it takes off a 12 and you get a lot, you have a lot of friends. All of a sudden you become popular. There you go. Get up, get up. Hey, on a miss, you gotta call for the ball so we can get it to you. So that way Paige doesn't give it to Madison and then, you know, it goes right to you. What you're doing is this, just because you're hearing through, right? You're like, well, I'm gonna go on her, even though she's not coming out shoulder to shoulder, right? You see that? Get up in her, all right? Let's go, shadow the ball, all over the ball. Shadow the ball, good, good. Good, on the ball, in the gap, good. Good, Bree. Get up. 12, next thing. 12. You gotta take your arm bar off him is when. I like it. Good work. Here we go. Good. Cross screen. Front. Here we go. Good. 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 Right, what we don't want to have is this. We don't want teams to come off on ball screens and get to the middle of the floor, all right? And then now, all right, they can get you scrambling, all right? Two big steps and let them, if they want to come off of it, up here, right up here, and make the reversal pass, that's fine. We're good? We good? All right, two big steps. All right, here we go. Good, Henny, midline. Good! Oh. Good, Henny. Good, that's it. Good! Hey, it's all right. Good talk, Des, good talk. There you go, good finish, Anil. I like, I like what we're doing right now. We have to be systematic. We're getting better. We're getting more organized. There's no question about it, okay? Let's keep taking steps this week. Together on three, one, two, three. Together. Thanks so much to Coach Verdi for doing that for us. We wish his team and Coach McCall's team best of luck as they creep closer to the start of the season. Well, time for us to step aside here on UMass Sports Insider. We'll be right back with a chance to visit with this year's Basketball Hall of Fame Kurt Gowdy Award winner, a guy who got his start in photography right here at UMass. See you on the flip side. This is the place where planets collide, where Pulitzer and Fulbright are full-time residents where 28,000 brilliant young minds from 65 countries call home. This is the place that propels the state and lifts the world. UMass Amherst, this is the place. The Learfield Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through thedirectorscup.com, USA Today, or at L Directors' Cup on Twitter or Facebook. 
Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. Andy Bernstein grew up with a love of photography, and then when he got to UMass as an undergrad, one of his first stops was to the Daily Collegian, where he began shooting sports photographs, some of which came from the iconic Curry Hicks cage. As he became a professional, Andy over the years became well known for capturing some of the greatest moments in recent NBA history, so much so that this year, Andy Bernstein received the Kurt Gowdy Award from the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, after which we were able to catch up with him to hear about how it all began. The unbelievable feeling that um, my body of work would be as um, respected, I guess, and um, as important uh, as it is to, to give me this award. It really is humbling. To come back here to campus where it all started, you know, a few miles down, up the road from Springfield um, is truly uh, monumental. I mean, as my friend Phil Jackson would say, this is a true full circle life event. You know, I said that in my speech that um, it all started here at UMass in this building at the cage. A picture of Alex Eldridge, one of the kind of phenoms at the time, back when I was here in 1975. That picture was published in the Collegian, so it was my first published basketball photo. And then off I went, you know, to the world, and you know, 40 years later, I come back, and they're giving me this the Gaudi Award at the Hall of Fame, and I'm back here at the cage where it started. It, it's truly full. It might be two full circles. I don't know, but it's definitely a, a major full circle life event. I came to UMass thinking I was might be a a, a film documentary photographer or photo photojournalist of some way. But sports was not on, really on the, high on the list. Oh, there's a lot of moments here at UMass that I'll never forget. Wherever I could uh, build a dark room I, or find a dark room, I did. There was one in McKinney, I think, in the basement. It was, of course, the one at the Collegian. And then I honestly built a dark room in my single room. One of the biggest memories I have, honestly, is, is, is seeing my name published in the Collegian. And, and going in the morning to the Collegian office and having you know that day's paper there and seeing on the front page or the back page, wherever it was, and, and photo by Andy Bernstein, I mean, that just blew my mind. I had never really shot basketball at all, maybe, maybe a, one game in high school. So when I got assigned to shoot a game at, in the cage, um, it was a completely different experience for me. And the crowd was loud, um, the building was full, uh, I remember it being pretty cold <laughs> um, and it was really dusty and uh, I, I learned right then and there that I had to tune out the crowd. You know, I always say that if I saw whatever happened happen, I missed the picture. So literally, if you see it happen, it means that I didn't see it in the camera because the camera should have clicked at the moment it happened. If I hadn't come to UMass, I don't, you know, who knows what would have happened. If I would have had the career I had, if I would have the opportunities, I'm thrilled that that's how it worked out. Congratulations to Andy, a well-deserved honor from the Naismith Hall of Fame. Time for us now to switch gears. We're going to move to the field hockey turf where you're about to meet a scorer for UMass who has nearly half of the team's goals this year. Antoinette Lowe came all the way from South Africa to New England where she has scored more than some of the entire teams that UMass has faced this year. So recently, we sat down with her to hear about her journey to UMass. For me, I started at the age of five playing hockey. Uh, my mother was a good hockey player. Grew up in a hockey school. Um, and hockey has just been always part of me. It's always been a passion and I've worked hard to come where I am today. 
The main idea of coming to UMass was to change of scenery and maybe to learn more about other hockey cultures as well. The opportunity popped up and I grabbed it with both hands and um, coming here I didn't really really know what to expect but um, whilst talking with the coaches before coming I actually realised that this might be a best decision for me at the moment. In UMass there's like eight internationals and you learn like from six, seven different countries and especially the coaches as well. I mean we have an English coach, an Australian and an American so I think and all of them played at high levels of hockey. But I think that was mainly one of my main decisions of coming here is just to get some more intel on how hockey around the world looks and um, yeah, to learn more culture. Good moves there, twirling around, working in a few defenders. The shot on goal is going to be past the keeper and in. It's like one of my specialities, a goal scorer I'm from young. I've been the goal scorer in the team always. And um, I think that's a motivation and it helps me to take up responsibility to my role on the team as well. It'll go to low. Makes a move, another shot on goal, and once again, yes, she will find the back of the cage. One of the biggest on-field memories or captions I have is the, when we played Lockhaven, and we went into overtime, and just scoring that last goal was just like the best feeling ever. Like, because we came out, out of a really hard contest, and yeah, we really pulled through. The Minute Women's regular season is winding down, and we wish them best of luck for Coach Weinberg and company as they try to make another run at an Atlantic 10 championship. We're coming back on UMass Sports Insider in just a few moments with a look at the recent UMass Hall of Fame ceremony, where several new legends were enshrined, along with the first ever full team inducted. That and more when we come back. This stage, under these bright lights, the Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship returns. 14 teams, one trophy. No one thought he'd come back, but he's coming back. This is new mass at a whole new level. Wow, you're sure? You're sure about that? All right. He's coming back. 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 Hey, who's that guy? We're back on UMass Sports Insider. One of the great nights annually for UMass Athletics is the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And recently, we had four legends enshrined along with the first ever full team inducted, the 1998 National Championship football squad. Let's take a look back at that great evening and the celebration of UMass success. Uh, I'd like to uh, just uh, start out by telling you how uh, important this night is every year for this athletic department. The reason for that is uh, why we celebrate our history, our proud history. The individuals this evening that are being recognized uh, have had great accomplishments. Great honor such, uh, to go in with such distinguished individuals that have all put their footprint in here at UMass. Um, you know, definitely honored, excited, um, and, and 
and now here we are. I always had an idea or a thought to be great, um, but to this level of greatness, no, no it wasn't. It wasn't in, in my thoughts, but my mindset was always to work and, and, and to be the best that I could be on and off the field. And it's, it's, it's amazing to be honored on, on a night like tonight. It's really great to have my kids see it. They don't really believe mom used to play. So, you know, to see the, the photos and anything like that, it's, it's great to have them with me to share, you know, what I used to do here. It means a lot to me, right? There's, uh, this university has done so much for, for me and you know to be thought of as somebody who's worthy of being on the Hall of Fame wall that's crazy right I mean I was just excited I was honored I was um, happy you know it's pretty cool I think this institution is a place and particularly the athletic department is a place where you work hard and you have some character and you commit yourself to your your craft and to your teammates and to what it means to wear UMass on your chest and you can have a lot of success and you know that was certainly the case for for me with the with the team here and for our team generally and you know that can lead to opportunities after school so um, yeah I mean this is a place where you work hard and it's, it's, it's gonna pay off. Obviously it was an honor for Kerry and I to be your captains uh, for that last year you know, before we kind of get into, you know, we saw a lot of it here, but I just want to just take a quick pause because I think it's important when you think of what UMass is and what UMass family is. I mean, we are a family. And and this is obviously you can see it tonight by how many guys have come back and, and their families. And, uh, you know, it's crazy because it seems like it was yesterday when we were all together. Probably the most impressive note about this year's Hall of Fame class is that both soccer goalie Zach Simmons and football safety James E. Hedebo both began their careers as walk-ons at UMass and then ended up enshrined in the George Trigger Burke Hall of Fame. Time for us to step aside for one final break. Don't go far, Halloween is getting closer, and that means one thing, we've put our student athletes through some spooktacular trivia. Coming up on the other side, get your candy corn ready when we come back. Quarter touchdowns for UMass. Jesse Brent hauls it in. Inside the 10, five touchdown. First of his career, Bilal Ali. Welcome back. You know, over the years, Halloween has been a favorite of ours here on UMass Sports Insider and especially for the lighter side. So we've got a treat for you this week. We put some UMass student athletes to the test with some scarific Halloween themed movie and TV show trivia. Let's see how they did. I think there's 31 because there's 31 days in October. <laughs> Like three or four, because there's that 
that the main girl and then they replace her with that fake girl. So I think it's four. Yes. Halloween Town? Um, I'm gonna guess seven, six maybe? Four. Oh. <laughs> Coraline? Oh. I was I was confident in that one. I don't know his name, but I know who I know when you bread I'm gonna be like, oh yeah. Skeletor. <laughs> Jack. A skeleton, I think. They sing the song and he's the pumpkin king. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Yeah. Ghostbusters. I knew that one. I knew that one. Yeah. Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> Monster Mash. Got one. <laughs> yes. Monster Mash. <laughs> oh, Thriller. No, it's not Thriller. Graveyard. <laughs> That's the only. I swear, it's the only dance is Thriller. The friendly ghost. He's so cute. He's a really friendly ghost. <laughs> the friendly ghost. Friday the 13th. Are there four of them? Oh, wow. There should be 13. Okay. I'm going to go with Scream. I know Scream has four of them. It has the least. That is 12. Um, oh, it's recent. I just watched it. Oh no. It was in 2009, right? Oh. <laughs> I didn't just watch it then. <laughs> I watched a uh, Friday the 13th. Yes. <laughs> Who knows these questions? Um, I'm gonna go with Scream and last year. That's what that's why I said it. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Halloween. And year, let's go 2016. Halloween 2018. <laughs> okay, so the first one was Halloween. Came out. I have to say the exact year. Probably like 70s. So like 1978? Yeah. That's exactly right. Exactly right. I do this. I just seen this. Uh, I think I'm gonna take a guess. I'm gonna go with Halloween 1978. Wow. Good work. <laughs> All right, guys, it looked like maybe some more treats than tricks in that trivia contest. I imagine we also might have some Halloween costume contest winners in that bunch as well. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of UMass Sports Insider. Thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to check out UMassAthletics.com for all the schedule information as the winter sports begin, as the fall sports begin to wind down as well. We'll see you for another episode right back here next time. Until then, I'm Josh Maurer, and again, thanks for watching.